Marshall. In a good mystery story, there should be such a tangle of clues that in desperation the only answer is the butler did it. But then this story isn't a mystery at all. It's about how desperate and amoral a man can be if murder seems the only answer to his problems. So why should he blame the butler for the death he finally managed to bring about? Forget it, Mother. It doesn't matter. If I want the money, I'll have to get it for myself. Oh, that's nice, dear. Just like your father. That's what he would have said. Now give me a nice kiss good night, and wish me sweet dreams. Good night, Mother. Sleep long and deep. <laughs> Our mystery drama, A Cup of Bitter Chocolate, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Joan Shea and Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. No human being ever sets out to kill another, do they? That doesn't ring quite true either, because sad and obscene as it may be, a small percentage do. I can't do it, Vera. I just can't. You've got to, Ted. No. It's the only way. There's got to be some other. We could borrow someplace. Do you know anyone who would lend you one other thin dime? Well, what about you, Vera? Isn't there somewhere you can raise some money? No. You got by before you met me. I mean, how... You want me to go back to that? No, I mean... Well, not exactly, but... Well, some of the guys you used to know... Why don't you come right out with what you want to say? There's only one way I could raise money from those men. Is that what you want me to do? What are you talking about? It doesn't matter. I'm not going back to that while I have you. I do have you, don't I, Ted? Yes, of course. I hope you mean that. I depend on you, my darling. So you better get the money. I can't get it from Mother. I've overdrawn my allowance. I have loan sharks clamping down on me from every side. I mean, where do I get it? You're the only heir, aren't you? You know that as well as I do, but... Well, you know how Mother is. Since I have never had the opportunity to meet her, I can only say I know how you tell me she is. Well, you can't exactly blame her. I'm all she has left. I mean... Well, she lost everything in one night all those years ago. I don't say I agree with how she feels since then, but... Well, you can understand it. You understand it, Ted. She has all the money. I haven't any control over it. She wouldn't have any control over it if... If she wasn't here. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't let's get started on that again. We never stop, darling. Oh, you don't know what you're saying. I know, all right. The only way you, me, us, will ever get the money we need out of your mother is if she is dead. Vera, I... I couldn't. I, I, I wouldn't know how. Suppose you were showed the way. I still couldn't. Look, I've done a lot of lousy things in my life, but nothing would make me go as far as... as murder. Are you sure? Yes. How long do you expect me to hang around? It's either now or never. Oh, Vera, please. I, I, I can't kill her. Okay. Then I go to her and get what I can out of her to leave her darling boy alone. Ah, that wouldn't work. It wouldn't be too sure. The point Dexter name is big news. Especially if there's a way to drag it into the dirt. And that's just what I would do unless she anteed up. For your information, one of the things your little Vera needs some heavy dough for is to keep you from becoming a father. Oh, no. Oh, yes. You can't. I mean, I, I mean, you What other choice do I have? Unless you want to marry me and live unhappily ever afterwards. I do, Vera. It's just that mother... Well, you, you've got to understand her, Vera. Why should I understand her? Would she even try to understand someone like me? It's just that... Well, since the whole rest of the family was, was wiped out in one night and she ended up in a wheelchair, she she hasn't been able to adjust to the fact that life goes on. It's, it's, it's like she was locked into that awful night. And time has just stood still for her from then on. She ought to be locked up if she's that lonely. No, she isn't. I mean, she's clear enough about everything else. It's... 
It's an attitude more than anything. Anyway, it wouldn't do any real good. The way the will is, it ties up the money while she's still alive. And the only way it ever comes to me is if she's... Di- what have I been trying to tell you? If I could only do it without being caught. You could. Lots of ways. How? Well, that's something we can work out together, darling. <laughs> I must be mad even to talk about it. There's, there's no way. Of course there is. Pills. What? Well, after the accident, she had the nervous breakdown and all, and her back condition. Well, she must pop some kind of pills. Yeah, I... She has a whole carload of prescriptions. Well, find out what they are. Uppers, downers, you name it. I got a pipeline to any kind. All we have to do is to find out what she has to take too much of. Just you, Miles. Yes, Mrs. Poindexter. I brought you your hot chocolate. Isn't it a little early for that? It's ten o'clock, madam. Oh, Master Ted isn't home? Mr. Poindexter has not yet returned. Where is he? I believe at the Union Trust Club, madam. It's Mm. bridge night and he fills in for the Commodore. Oh, yes, of course. I'm so forgetful. His father would have been proud of him. Still... It is rather late. Not for today, Mrs. Poindexter. What is today? Tuesday, madam. April 14th, 1979. Oh, how foolish of me. How the years pass. Or do they? We are none of us getting any younger. What a terrible thought. I I mean, not for me, but for all the rest. Try to forget, Mrs. Poindexter. It wouldn't do any good, Miles. I cannot. For they... None of them could ever get older. It all stopped for them in that awful moment when the car went off the road. Janice, Bruce, Thomas, Francesca, and the Commodore himself. Never to get any older, never to be again. Oh, only Ted and myself left. Oh, why, Miles? I can't give you any answer. My husband and all my children except my... my little one. It was God's will that you should be spared. I suppose. Except, do you know, Miles, I often wonder why. Uh, uh, May I uh, pour your chocolate before it gets cold? Oh, dear... Thoughtful, faithful, Miles. What would I do without you? Yes, of course. Uh, Will you have your pills? Oh, I suppose so. Whatever they're for. Well, Dr. Bruchard is very definite that you follow his routine. Very well. Ted usually feeds them to me. But if you're sure you know what it is I am supposed to take... I think you can trust me, Mrs. Poindexter. Oh, after my beloved son. Who else in the world, Miles? Yes, madam. Here they are, all laid out for you. (laughs) What is it? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking how odd and variable life is. Night after night I accept these pills without looking at them or questioning what I take. Yes. (laughs) Just a silly, vagrant thought. If anyone wanted to get rid of me, it would be so easy. Maybe it... It might be better. Madam. Oh, Miles, I'm only being silly. I'm ashamed of myself for even having voiced the thought. What are you doing, Miles? Oh, oh, Mr. Ted. Just making up your mother's hot chocolate as usual before bedtime. Well, as long as I'm home tonight, I'll take it up to her. You haven't been at home so much lately, these days. Haven't I? (laughs) But that's my business, isn't it? The madam always misses you, Master Ted. I don't have to have a butler criticize my relationship with my mother. No, sir. Yes, so you can leave me to take the chocolate up. I'll try to make it my business from now on. Uh, 
It's always so nice and soothing. You should try a cup yourself before you go to bed, Teddy. Well, maybe I will. It certainly relaxes you. Oh, yes. But not nearly so much as having you bring it up and just sitting with me for a while. That's the best part of it. Well, I'm glad you think so. We should spend as much time together as we can. Well, if you want. Oh, I do. But only if you want it. Is it what you want, Ted? Uh, yes, Mother. It's one of the things I do. What else? Well, Mother, there are some <laughs> business things I might like to do if I had some capital. Money? Uh, yes. Well, darling, why not? Just take all that up with Judge Gearing and his law firm. He was your father's best friend, and he'll know if whatever you want to do is a good idea. I don't want to take it up with the judge or his law firm. I'd like to be on my own. And so you should be when you are ready. But in the meantime, don't slink away from good advice. Your father always... Mother, said... what my father said hasn't much relativity anymore. Well, oh, look, can't I have some money, some freedom to be my own man? What do you need money for, anyway? Oh, forget it, Mother. It doesn't matter. If I want it, I'll... I'll just have to find a way to get it myself. That's nice, dear. Just like your father. That's exactly what he would have said. Now, give me a nice kiss goodnight, darling. And wish me sweet dreams. <sighs> Good night, Mother. Sleep long and deep. <laughs> Sure, these will be enough, Vera? Yes. Just spill the powder out of the capsules into that icky drink she takes before she goes to sleep. There won't be any suspicion. Why should there be? An old back bay Boston family like yours? Anyway, there's no way to trace these pills. Oh, I don't think I could take that drink up to her. Well, you better take that drink up, Ted. And make sure she gets it. <laughs> Mr. Ted. Oh, I, uh, I uh, didn't see you there, Miles. Uh, Did you want something from the pantry, sir? Oh, no. Oh, uh, yes. I uh, I was just getting Mother's chocolate ready to uh, take up. I can do that for you. Uh, no, no, Miles. I, you know she likes me to do it when I can. I, I wanted to get this from me. Yes, sir. If you'll let me have the pot, I'll put it on a tray with a cup and you can take it right up. You shouldn't have come back here, Ted. I can't be in the house with her knowing that... You sure she drank it? I, I watched her swallow every drop. You used all the pills? Yeah, Miles nearly caught me at it. I was just putting the lid back on the pot when, when he came in. You think he suspects? No. All right. You've got to get back there and empty out all her own pills so that it looks like suicide. I can't. I can't look at her dead. You've got to, Ted. It's just how you wanted to see her all your life. did it. And you're gone. <laughs> and I'm free. Free at last. Ted, darling. <gasps> oh, what time is it? Oh, what are you looking at me like that for? Well, might she ask that question? For Ted Poindexter's blood has run cold as his mother's corpse speaks to him. Frozen in white shock, his mouth hanging open loosely while a scream of terror crystallizes in his throat. He is speechless. How can the woman he murdered be alive? Or is she a ghost returned to haunt him forever? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. A gray woman, old before her years, lies in the middle of the bed, gazing up at the sun, who is her whole life. It would be beyond her comprehension to learn that he has just tried to take that life from her. As for Ted Poindexter, after his initial shock at being spoken to by a woman he considered dead, he has not gotten a grip on himself. And while he desperately tries to justify his presence in his mother's bedroom in the middle of the night, his mind is racing and speculating about what could have gone wrong in his plan for murder. Well, what is it, Ted? It's, it's all right now, Mother. It was only the... When I came home, the front door was just on the latch. I called for Miles, but there was no answer. And 
And I started to worry that the house might have been broken into or something. Well, I, I certainly hope not. I, I haven't been disturbed. Oh, poor boy, so worried. Uh, what time is it? Oh, uh, it's about two in the morning. Oh, is that all? Oh, I really feel quite wide awake. I'm afraid I don't, Mother, so uh, I'll say good night and let you get back to sleep. I'll uh, turn the light off. I um, wonder what happened to Miles. Well, he came up about 10.30 and knocked on the door to see if I needed anything. I, I told him no, and he said he was feeling a bit tired and was going to bed. But it isn't like him not to lock up. No, no, it isn't. Perhaps before you go to bed, you could just look in on him and see that he's all right. Yes, I, uh, I will. Good night, Mother. <laughs> know what went wrong, Vera. But I thought you said your mother drank every drop of what you brought her. She did. And it didn't affect you at all? No. That's impossible. Unless... Unless what? Is there any possibility that your butler could have switched drinks in the pantry? But why? You said you found him passed out in his bedroom. That he left the front door open. That's right. But had he been drinking? No. At least there was no odor of alcohol. You suppose he could have swallowed the chocolate mint for your mother? If he made a switch? Maybe, but why would he drink it? It could have been an accident. I mean, how many pots are there in that set of china? Oh, half a dozen? You know, it's a, it's a breakfast thing with individual servers. But but he, if he drank the... Oh, what if he dies? How do we account for him? How do you account for him, you mean? Ted, you better get a doctor there fast and keep him alive. Maybe, for all I know, I'd be better off with Miles dead... Only I'm not, Mr. Poindexter. I'm not dead yet, by a long shot. Ted? Ted, what is it? What's wrong? I, uh, I can't talk anymore. I'll, uh, I'll have to call you back. I thought you were in bed, Miles. I was. I lay down for a few minutes. I had no right to fall asleep. Why not? It's not a very good way to protect Mrs. Poindexter. Yes, forgetting to lock the front door wasn't a very good way either. Hmm... I'm afraid she has less to fear from outside the house than inside. What the devil does that mean, Miles? I think you know, Ted. Ted? Where we stand now goes a long way beyond a master-servant relationship. Oh, and where do we stand? I've been with the Poindexter family for nearly 40 years, long before you were born. I consider them the only family I have. I think or always thought of... Every one of them is mine. Except you. Yes. I've always been quite aware of your disapproval. My feelings for you are a lot stronger than that, my boy. I can live without your love, Miles. Get on with it, huh? The rotten apple in the barrel. The bad seed. You've never been any good. You have no right to judge me. If I didn't before, I have now. What does that mean? The girls... The shoddy little affairs, the petty thievery, the drugs. They're all one thing. But murder is something else, Ted. Murder? I know about the woman you're mixed up with. I've followed you more than once on my days off. You stupid old meddler, why couldn't you mind your own business? I considered it mine. Because I know you only too well. I could see that desperate thing building behind your eyes. I knew how far in debt you were... I never dreamed how far you were ready to go to get out of it. Until the last few days. Get to the point. Not with pleasure, I assure you. I wondered why you were suddenly giving up your evenings just to take your mother her chocolate drink. And I wouldn't admit it to myself, but I was afraid of why. Tonight, I watched you prepare that lethal dose carefully... So when I got you the tray, I changed to a pot I always brew for myself. You've gotten away with a lot, Ted. But you don't really think as long as I'm around that you could really get away with murder. And Miles didn't drink the chocolate with the pills in it? No. Well, then why did he pass out? I don't know. He's an old man. He got tired, maybe. He may be an old man, but he's got you right under his thumb. Well, as long as he has that chocolate drink stashed away. If that drink was to be analyzed, it could lead right back to me. It won't be, he says, if I stay in line. 
You mean with all the evidence in his hands, he won't go to the police? Only if I try anything again. There's only one answer, Ted. You've got to get rid of Miles first. Or both of them together. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Mrs. Poindexter. What, Miles? The squeak. I've got to oil that wheel on your chair. Oh, it doesn't matter. I don't even hear it among the bird cries. Oh, what a perfect day to be alive. I do love the spring so, when everything is being reborn. Yes, it's my favorite time of year, too. Hold the chair, Miles. Yes. I'd like to get out and walk a bit. Are you sure? Oh, yes. I've been doing a lot of walking lately. And my back seems to hold up very well. I think it's a phase, some kind of cycle. They say your metabolism changes every seven years. Look. See? Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, that's how it feels. Maybe it's just spring, but, well, everything is lovely. Even my poor Ted. Ted? I've always been conscious, believe it or not, how I hemmed him in. I suppose he must have resented it. But the last week, he doesn't seem to. Oh, maybe we found an accommodation somehow. I hope you have. And you walk wonderfully. Well, the doctors say in time I could get back to normal. With your help, or someone's, of course. You can always have my help, Clara. Clara? Oh, I, I'm sorry. That just slipped out. Well, why not? You're a good friend. What would I do without you? You don't need anyone. Not anymore. <laughs> I'm afraid that isn't true. I'm suddenly very tired. I, uh, I'd better get back to my chair. Yeah, lean on me. Uh, when don't I? All right. Thank you. Uh, I'll wheel you back through the garden. I'd like to, but it's a, such a long way. Oh, would I be too heavy to push up the hill and in through the garage? To me, you're always light as a feather, Mrs. Poindexter. Uh, I think I like Clara better. So do I. But I don't think for us it's quite appropriate. Well, here's the chair. Let's get you settled. I... I hate to get off my feet, but... Oh, I still do get a little tired. That will pass. Oh. Oh, that's Ted. Oh, I don't know why he likes those funny little low-slung cars. That's not so little, that sports car. You'd be surprised how much it weighs. Uh, wheel me up the drive, Miles. Ted's just getting out. I want to ask him something. Yes, here we go. Oh, we should have leveled off this incline long ago. Those concrete walls on each side, it's like going up into a tunnel. I always used to think when I parked and got out to open the garage door, if the brakes would ever go on... <gasps> oh, what is it? The car. Ted's car. Ah, good Lord. It's slipping backwards. Ted, 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 Miles, look it's, out. It's coming right at us. Too fast. It, it, it must be in reverse. Oh, Miles, went too fast. Hold on. Hold on, Clara. Hold on. Mother, mother, are you all right? I, I, I think I'm all right. Oh, Miles? Just a sec, I, I got to cut this motor. I can't get to the ignition or... Uh, come on, mother, I'll get you out of here. What, what about Miles? Never mind, I'll go back for him. You first. Here, let me get you. Hurry, hurry, Dad, you, you've got to save Miles. Yeah, one, one at a time. There, hey. I, okay. I'm all right, Ted. Now get back before it's too late. How is he, Dr. Bouchard? Oh, fine, Ted, fine. Very lucky. When he went rolling away from the car, after he'd saved your mother, he ended up behind the wall. It shielded him from the explosion. And mother? Oh, a few little scrapes and abrasions. Matter of fact, I'm very cheered to learn she was spry enough on her feet to get out of range. Her back is improved wonderfully. You can see her if you want. I'd uh, like to see Miles first, uh, if I can. Well, I don't see why not. He's bright enough at the moment. But uh, your mother wants to see him, too. Yeah, well, I won't be a moment. Okay. If I have other patients waiting, I'll have a nurse take you in. I want you to know, Miles, it was an accident. I don't think I could ever believe that. What? 
What, what do you intend to do? I don't know. I want to talk it over with your mother. Are you going to tell her everything? I might. I'll deny it. I expected that. She might not even believe it of you, even with the proof. The drink with the drugs in it? That really doesn't prove anything. No, not in a court of law, perhaps. Or to my mother. We shall see. That's something we'll know by tomorrow. And in this world, nothing is certain but death and taxes, said Mr. Benjamin Franklin. For once the great sage was wrong, in this tale, it seems that death, even if prevalent, is very uncertain. I wonder if it'll ever come about, and to whom. To find out, join me shortly for Act Three. Dexter has fled to his inamorata, Vera, in search of what solace he can find from her. Clara Poindexter has come to visit Miles in his hospital room, proud that, with some help from a nurse, she's been able to walk there. Fortunately, she is seated beside his bed now, for what Miles has to tell her is enough to make anyone reach for support. I don't believe it, Miles. I just won't listen to it. You have to, Clara. No. How could you do this to me? Ruin what little life is left to me. Uh, all I want to do is save your life. By telling me that my son wants to take it from me. If that's true, what's it worth saving for? Clara, listen to me. You've still got a lot of years. Now that your back is responding to treatment, now that you can walk again, you can shake off the past and look forward to a future. There's been enough disaster in your life. You've got every right to a future that can bring you some joy and some laughter and happiness. I tell you, frankly, that up until recently, I had some hope that I could share it with you. What? Well, it's not so impossible. If you forget that I'm a butler, you can remember that I'm a man. And that I've loved you for more years than I care to remember. Miles! Uh, I don't know what to say to that. As it happens, you won't have to say anything. No, just a moment. I don't know what kind of snob you think I am. No, 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 no. I don't think you're a snob, but coming from an, our background, it might have been difficult. If I thought I was enough woman for you, there would have been no problem. The problem is that I am not enough man for you. I decide that. You can't. I'd like to see you stop me. Clara, forgive me for having to say this. I have to stop you because I'm dying. But you... you... I'm not so young that I can complain. The other night, when I fell asleep and forgot to lock the door, that's part of it. Why I'm here in the hospital is too. Both nights I blacked out because I... Uh, Miles... Oh, Miles, what, what is it? Dr. Bruchard knows about it. I have what's called a neoplasm. The short and more brutal word is a tumor on the brain. Quite inoperable. But something can be done in this day and age. No, nothing for this one. It's growing. I haven't long to live. Oh, my poor Miles. What can I do for you? It's not what you can do for me, Clara. It's what I can't do for you anymore. When I'm gone, I can't protect you. But I'm getting well again. I don't need protection. I wish that was true. I don't want you to worry about me. But I do. Maybe I should bite the bullet and accuse Ted of attempted murder. Miles, you couldn't do that. It isn't true. Today was an accident. Maybe, but the drink he made for you was deliberate. I'll never believe Ted could do anything as, as dreadful as that. Even if I proved it to you by having it analyzed? No. Miles, why do you want to destroy me? Destroy you? Nothing is further from my mind. I only want to save you. From what? From Ted? My own son? 
No, Clara. Even more than that, from yourself. Okay, Ted, I give up. Come on in. Vera, I've got to talk to you. About what? There, there was an accident today. So I heard on the radio. You tried to get them both, and you botched it. I mean, you really botched it. Now they've got you in a corner. Vera, listen. Today was an accident. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've been meaning to have the shift gate attended to. You see, on that hill there, I usually shove it into first, but the gate is worn and it goes in reverse half the time, so you know, I leave it in neutral and depend on the handbrake. But this time, I must have had it in reverse. Oh, and... Ted, spare me the mechanical jazz. You think any jury's going to believe all that? What jury? Oh, wasn't someone hurt? They're both in the hospital. No, no, no. They're both okay. And Miles is just going to sit still for you? I don't know. The way he feels about the family name. Don't forget all that, even if he does. Where are you now? A fat chance you have of raising any dough to get what we have to off our backs. I've got something else to tell you. What? Using your collateral as heir to the point Dexter dough. You raised a lot of loans through me and my connections. To say nothing of those pills I kited through for you. We got all that through some pretty heavy sources. And these guys don't play footsie. How are we going to pay off? I right, just, just... Give me some time. We're playing out of time, Ted. These guys are leaning on me. And what they do to me is peanuts compared to what they could do to you. So where do we go from here? And I better be somewhere fast. Yeah, there's only one way I can figure, Vera. Can you get me a gun? A gun? What are you going to do with it? Miles leaving the door open the other night made me think. Now look, half the houses on our block have been broken into some time or another. So? So there's going to be a prowler breaks in real soon at my house, and there'll be some shoot and two deaths. You can't get away with it, Ted. I mean, no, only one gun. I have a registered gun in the house with a police license. They'll find the bullets from that where I missed the prowler. The gun you give me will do the damage, and I'll dump that in the bay. When? How soon can I get the gun? Well, make a call right now. They come home from the hospital tonight. We haven't much time. It'll have to be tomorrow night. My, how you've changed. You scare me. Yeah, maybe I'm just growing up and facing facts. Miles can blow the whistle on me any time he wants. I want to blow mine first. Clara. I, I mean, Mrs. Poindexter. Good morning, Miles. What are you doing on your feet? Getting very used to navigating on them again. How are you today? Uh, it's intermittent. Uh, for the moment, I couldn't feel better. Uh, give me that bag or whatever it is you have. Well, it's my personal laundry. I, I thought I'd give myself a little challenge today. More than what you're doing? Uh, watch it now. Don't rush the steps. Well, between you and the magistrate, I should have no trouble. What challenge? Well, after breakfast, I'm going to visit the laundry room downstairs and put my own personal things in to wash. Aren't you pushing things a little, madam? I thought I was Clara now. Uh, oh, forgive me for that. That was only a dream. I don't see why. I haven't anything to offer you. Only my life. What's left of it. Up until yesterday, I thought there was none left of mine. Look at you, Clara. Back on your feet, finding your health. You would have everything left if it weren't for... Don't. He's my son. He's your nemesis. No, no, I'll never accept that. Yes, I know. I'm afraid you never will. Where is Ted, by the way? Uh, he went off somewhere. Said he had to pick up something, but that he'd be back by dinner time. Uh... Miles, what is it? No, nothing, nothing. It's just a slight headache. Come along now. Breakfast is waiting. Yes? A uh, pecan repair. You got a clothes dryer under Fritz? Oh, yes, yes. Come in, please. Uh, uh, mm. Excuse me. Uh, right. Yes, madam? I heard the doorbell. Is that Ted, Niles? Uh, no, madam. The man to fix the dryer. Oh, fine. As soon as he's through, I'd like to dry that stuff of mine in the machine. Very well, madam. Uh, this way, please. Right. Now, what's the trouble? It hasn't been turning itself off. 
And the laundress complains that she's getting some slight electric shocks from it. Oh, this is the laundry. There's the dryer. Uh, uh, what kind of shocks? Probably all in her mind. There can't be anything too dangerous about a machine like that. Uh, are you kidding? 220 volts you're messing with here. Now, just a couple of things have to go wrong and you don't follow instructions. Bye-bye, birdie. <laughs> what you mean, bye-bye, birdie? A guy could get killed. How? Well, like this, you see. Now, now, now this here is the ground wire. It ain't connected properly. That's why the maid maybe got a shock or two. Oh. Which might have killed her? No. No sweat as long as you're careful. And like I said, follow instructions. But how could it be dangerous? Well, you see, like this, you know, supposing you got a wet floor, you see, no ground wires. You're taking a real chance. Uh, if you want to figure curtains, supposing you got a, uh, a metal plate right here in front of the dryer, and you took this ground wire and hooked it up to that. Boom. <laughs> you got the perfect murder. What kind of metal plate? Well, most anything. Uh, like the front here I just took off to get inside. Hey, you see, there was just a loose wire. <laughs> right. Well, you're all set now. I'll just put the front back no, on. No, 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 that's all right. Leave it off. I'll put it back. I, uh, want the maid to vacuum the inside. Good evening, Mr. Poindexter. Ah, oh, Miles. So, we're back to that again, huh? Crossed swords? I don't trust you. I told you yesterday was an accident. I don't believe you. I don't know any way to convince you. Neither do I. Yes, we can't go on living this way. That is obvious. You're not afraid I'd hurt Mother in any way as long as you can dangle your so-called evidence over my head? Maybe not. But I'm afraid for her as long as you're around. I don't know how you can get rid of me. Is that Ted? Yes, Mother, I'm home. I'll be down in a minute, dear. Oh, Miles, uh, is that stock in the dryer ready yet? Uh, no, ma'am. Oh, dear. Well, well, can we turn it on? I think so, ma'am. I wonder if you'd mind, Mr. Poindexter? What, turning on the dryer? If you don't feel it's beneath your dignity... Ah... Uh, What's the matter? Oh, just a headache. Uh, I think you'd better turn on that dryer. Okay, Miles. Since we seem to be short of footmen, why not? Where is it? In the laundry room at the bottom of the stairs. The light is on. Yeah, don't think this is some sort of victory, Miles. I'll have my innings, too. Uh, what do I do? Just stand in front of it and pull on the switch. Right. I'm sorry, Clara. It's the only way I knew you could be safe. You're going to be all right, Miles. They're going to operate. Get that tumor out. Too late. They know that. Eh, it doesn't matter. The headaches were so excruciating I couldn't have stood them. This is... Goodbye, Clara. No, don't leave me. Not alone. Look at you. Standing. It's starting all over again for you. For us. Yeah. It's too late. Clara. What? Before they brought me here, I drank the chocolate and washed the chocolate pot. No evidence. No scandal. And whatever happens, I even the score for Ted's death. A terrible accident. But the only thing that matters is that you're safe. Safe at last. Miles died from cardiac arrest before they could excise the tumor. It made little difference, but the drink had killed him anyway. The funeral of Ted Poindexter was a private one, with few mourners. But the friends who were there delighted in the fact that his mother came to it without the wheelchair that had caged her so long. 
As some simple soul has remarked, it was the best of a bad business. I'll be back shortly. As we said in the beginning, this was the story of The Butler Did It. And of course, in the fashion of mystery stories, we hope to confuse you and that you would never believe it. Only this time, the butler actually did do it. Were you surprised? Our cast included Paul Hecht, Robert Dryden, and Joan Shea. The entire production is under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre.